Let's do right. it. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the One Up Sales Development Podcast. And for today's episode, we got is a truly, 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 truly special treat and episode for you guys here. And uh, from on, um, the One Up Sales Development Podcast has always had a lot of males and never before had we had a female before. So for this person, only is she not representing for the first female guest ever on the One Up Sales Development Podcast. This person has been a huge help for a lot of people she is awesome she is a huge advocate and she is that person who had who used to be a debater in terms of school doing debates she is that freelance dancer she is a singer she is a lover she is a hugger she is your content creator she is your top rep that you'll ever meet please give us a warm welcome to the one and only Sarah Brazier <laughs> That is the best intro I've ever received. I, I hope, uh, I hope I can deliver because that's a big hype. <laughs> oh my God, Sarah! On behalf of the One Up Sales Development Podcast, thank you again so much for doing this. We finally, finally got you. I know we set for a while back. Things happen. Definitely understand, but really happy that you're able to make it. And thank you again for hopping on the pod. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to get to it. Yeah, that's the awesome ass Brazier we all know. And for those out there who are listening and you don't know who she is, you got to go ahead and look her up this far. She is the one and only. So, Sarah, without further ado, why don't we go ahead and just jump in right in. Tell us about who you are and how did you get into sales? Yeah, so my name's Sarah Brazier and I'm an SDR at Gong. The way I got into sales, it's a uh, I don't know if it's the typical story or if it's not, but I was working as an actor in San Francisco and I was working like two day jobs on top of doing plays. So I'd wake up super early, go be a barista, barista all, all morning, and then go to my second job as a you know front desk person at a startup. And then at the end of that day, I'd, I'd run home, change clothes and go to rehearsal. And I thought, man, this is just like, no way to live because I could, I just wasn't making money. You don't make a lot of money working the front desk. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> and uh, you also don't make a lot of money as a barista and you definitely don't make a lot of money as a, as an actor. So oh, I, I'm, I, yeah. So I met some people um, at the company I was front desking at. Uh, they're called Optimizely. One of them was this guy named Jim Jones and he, um, he was like the director of enablement there. And, he walked past my desk a couple times and I asked him what he did. He said, Oh, I do enablement. I said, I don't know what that is. So we started talking about sales and, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he, he gave me one of the books that the enablement, that the enablement team was using with, with the, with the salespeople. It's called to sell as human. He said, read this and let me know if you want to be in sales. So I did. And it was really good. And, uh, that, uh, I said, okay, Jim, I'm ready to do it. I read the book, so I know everything about sales. Make me a salesperson. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and he introduced me to a couple people, and that got me my first SDR job. And then eventually I became an SDR at Gong. And yeah, that's, uh, that's the long and short of it. That's the story. I was poor, nice. so I went into sales. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper. So you... you you used to be an actor, right? You all, you want to become an actor, and can you tell us a little bit about experience? What 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 made you choose that route, and what was your experience um, when it really, you know, in terms of your gigs as being an actor? Yeah, so I mean, I I've been doing shows since I was like six years old, oh, and wow. yeah, I I just I love acting. I love storytelling. I love I love communicating and. Um, uh, theater is really fun because you get to try on different life experiences without putting yourself at risk. So if you want to go on a really crazy adventure or, you know, live in a different time period, you can, and, um, you learn so much. So I, I, I loved it. And I, I did it all through, I mean, from basically the age of six on, I was doing shows and then, um, I, I did some shows in college. I did speech and debate in college, which for me was like competitive acting. And eventually when I landed my first 
job job as a grown up working at a nonprofit, I was like, man, I, I just moved to a city. I don't know anyone. I, I should go be in a place so I can make some friends. So I went and auditioned for the first show I could find. Turns out it was a professional theater. And when I showed up for the first day of rehearsal, they were like, and here's your contract and here's how much you'll be making. And I was like, oh my God, I'm a professional actor. <laughs> <laughs> it really happened and I didn't even know. <laughs> oh man, that was good. I love that. Okay. And then I just kept, yeah, I kept doing it. People were like, oh man, you're so good at this. You got to keep, you got to keep being in shows. You got to keep your, 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 destined to be on Broadway you're destined you should move to LA you should be on you know you should be in movies so I was like well everyone believes in me so I should do it and <laughs> <laughs> that's one way to do it oh, yeah I'm gonna do it and I you know I did it I did a ton of shows but the reality of being in professional theater and not having a job that's also providing you health insurance and you know, helping you pay your rent, especially in a city as expensive as San Francisco. It's just really hard. And everybody else I know who's, who's a professional actor, they all have jobs like, like mine. So I still do shows and I'm still involved in stuff. I produce things, I do readings, but the more I did sales, the more I thought, man, I'm really kind of enjoying this. And I feel like I'm getting so much more traction and I'm making, I'm just like, I'm just like, like, I, I feel like I'm just really appreciated here. And I feel like I'm just moving forward in a way that I couldn't get traction uh, in the theater scene. Cause you know, it's, you, if you don't look a certain way, <laughs> it doesn't matter how good you are, you don't get the part. And uh, if you're, if you're really good at sales, it doesn't matter how you look, you still win the deal. <laughs> so um, I thought, well, you know what? this is pretty great. I feel like I'm getting some wins and not only am I getting wins, I'm also like, you know, like making some money, making a difference. I'm having impactful conversations. It's a whole different form of storytelling, but I think what I should, so I, I made a commitment to myself at the beginning of 2019. I was like, I'm just going to put theater on pause. I'm only going to, I'm only going to say yes to jobs that I really like. Like, really, I have to do that. I'm just going to put it on pause, put it on the back burner, and I'm going to cultivate a skill set that will make me really, really desirable for any business so that if I, so that when I decide to make the plunge into theater again, or film or whatever I want to do, if I want to, then I will have this amazing skill set that I can always fall back on. Um, and I haven't decided to make the plunge because I feel like I'm learning too much in the wonderful world of sales. So right. that'll probably, that'll be in a while. That'll probably be like my Betty White career, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. So a quick question, um, Sarah. So you were doing shows since you were a kid, since you were six. Um, was this back in Kentucky? Is that where you grew up at? I actually, I didn't grow up in Kentucky. I grew up in Ohio, neighboring states, a little more, a little more oh, east. Okay. Um, but I went to college in Kentucky. I, I got my degree at Western Kentucky. So yeah, in Ohio, doing shows, doing everything from like the church play to community theater, um, any, anywhere that there was a show going on, if I could be in it and, and it wasn't too far for my mom to drive or if I could find a ride even better, nice. um, <laughs> then okay. I'd do it. Okay, okay, perfect. And just out of curiosity, what, what did the show look like? Let's say for your most recent one, like when you're in college, was it where they said, hey, Sarah, here's the script and the platform. Are you going out there? Are you talking, are you doing the storytelling, telling them from A to B to C, and then you're acting it out? Or what does that look like? Yeah, okay, so so it can be all kinds of things. Yeah. Typically, what, what, uh, what typically happens is, um, a director or a producer will say, hey, we're doing the show. This is the name of the show. This is what it's about. Here are the, the parts that we're casting for. And I'll have a description of the different characters. Um, and then from there, you'll go and audition. You'll read some sides from the play, maybe have a monologue that you perform. It's only like a minute long. It's basically like your pitch on the phone. You have a minute monologue to show them like, I'm really good. Um, <laughs> And and then you'll then you'll read you'll they'll, then they'll hand you a script and you've never seen it before, and and they'll be like okay read this and so you have to like you have to be really fast you have to read it really quickly in front of you and figure out okay like what is this person feeling where are they what time period is it 
Do they have a British accent? Okay, go. <laughs> nice. And you have to make some choices. And then from there, they let you know if you got the part. And, and, then, and then, then you go into rehearsal and you do a lot of stuff. Got it. Got it. Love that. Love that. Okay. So let, let's uh, work a little bit backwards too. So I know you mentioned you were at Optimize Lead, right? That's where you, um, your good buddy, was it Jim you said? His name was Jim? Yeah, Jim Jones. Jim, Jim Jones. Jones is great. Great. And he got you involved into sales. Like, is that where you start learning about like, oh, sales development? What is this thing? What's this gig? And then you're really learning more about that? Yeah. So, so he's like, okay, so, you know, no one's going to hire you as an account executive. You don't have an experience. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's true that is true yeah that's true. i mean he doesn't say that exactly but that's basically what he's saying i'm reading between the lines i'm like okay fair jim i think yeah. i could i think i could be a closer but fair um doesn't matter what i think it matters what the hiring manager thinks so he's like you should talk to um you should talk to some people who work at optimizely so i started talking to the sdrs and getting, you know, feedback from them on what it's like to be an SDR, um, kind of like shadowing them in their job. I, uh, he, he hooked me up with a couple different SDRs that he knew at other companies. And I just had phone conversations with them just to understand what a day in the life of being an SDR is. And I, I mean, it's pretty obvious, like you book meetings for account executives. That's like what you do. And it's yeah. like, okay, got it. Um, I think I can do that. Uh, it sounded, it sounds a lot simpler than the actual action is. Uh, it sounds a lot easier than what, what, what it takes to actually get a meeting to happen. No one explained to me how, how many no's I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> That's the how scary many, truth, right? The deadly truth. Yeah. How many like doors it. get slammed in the, in my face. But once I figured that out, it's like, okay, well, this is like going to auditions. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's funny. They're like, hey, check it out. You just book meetings. That's all it is. And they don't tell you the whole thing behind it. And once you get there, you're like, oh, damn, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. You're like, wow, this is, this is really redundant. This is a grind. But, but then I think like, okay, well, it might be redundant. It might be a grind. So how can I make it you know, educational? Turns out when you start using the SDR experience to learn about how businesses run, how they function, how to identify problems within a business that you're not involved in based off of listening to the quarter earnings calls or reading their press releases or, you know, following what people from the company are posting. Then you start, then, then it becomes really interesting. You start learning a lot. So if someone had pitched me being an SDR, not as like a meeting booker, but as like a detective, you know, you're, you're a business detective. You're finding problems and you're solving them and you're connecting the dots and you're finding all the clues. That's how I think of my job. And, and then it becomes really interesting. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, I, I love that. I, I just want to piggyback a little bit on that. So you talk, you just mentioned right now, it's, not, it's more of like being a detective and a mind. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And that's what's broken now today in the sales development world, right? There's a lot of people who just going out there, hey, this is what we do. This is what we do. Can we get 15 minutes of your time? 15 minutes of your time. But it's more like, hey, I noticed this is what you guys currently do. Typically, this is normally what happened. I mean, I'm not sure is it relevant or not. But if so, would you be open to learning more? Um, is that pretty much that your mind, my thought to as well? Yeah, totally. I think that, you know, it's, it's a... Uh it's, it's definitely, it's just, it's noticing things that potentially could be problems. It's confirming that the problem that you see is actually the problem that the person is experiencing. Yeah. Sometimes it's educating, right? You get to use your challenger sale where you say, Hey, listen, you might not know that this is actually a problem. Like, did you know that you're wasting a lot of time or you're wasting a lot of resources on something that, that we could solve that wouldn't nice. actually exist? Sometimes it's, it's, it's a challenger sale like that. Sometimes it's just finding pain. It's more Sandler, just going through the pain funnel asking asking uh, questions to to surface their pain diving into the root cause of it and then you know asking if they'd be open to you know solving that pain is this a, is this a big enough problem for them to solve is this something that they need to solve today or in a month you know what what would what would it, what would they what would they pay what would they do what would it take for them to like how important is it for them to solve uh, that problem so yeah Yes, I love that. Continuous <laughs> probing, right? Just not stopping at the first no. You keep probing, keep probing. Just 
asking open-ended questions. I love that. Sarah, for, for those who are listening right now, so you start as an SDR. You're now a senior SDR over at Gong.io. So for those who are listening, can you please tell us um, what is Gong.io and what do you guys do? Yeah, uh, it's a great tool. I wouldn't work anywhere that doesn't have Gong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. No, I really wouldn't. Like, it's just, it's just that good. Like, yeah. It's good. Everyone should look at Gong now. Um, but yeah. yeah, what we do is we capture calls. Uh, so imagine that right now, instead of us being, you know, on a, on a podcast, we're on a sales call and we're capturing that. And then we transcribe and analyze it. That's the boring part. The interesting part is that is what comes from the analytics. So we start understanding, you know, why, why are you hitting quota? more consistently than I am. What special magic do you have that is making you win more deals or book more meetings? Um, is it something with your talk track? Is it, you know, how you, how you set up a firm future commitment? Is it how you position the agenda? Is it how you handle specific objections? Um, is it, you know, how you position the product? And, and we can surface everything, all the things that you hope to find out, you know, like how often our competitors mentioned um, and, you know, how, what direction should you take your go-to market strategy in? In that case, you know, are reps adopting messaging plays or pricing plays or whatever, as well as just like, you know, understanding the nitty gritty of, of what separates top performers from everyone else. So you can hit quota more consistently. Um, nice. On top of that. I never have to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. How much time are you guys taking notes right now for those who's listening right now? So, um, Sarah, just to confirm, I, I, you know, big fan of Gong. And so let's say it transcribes, right? Is it pretty much typing things out, breaking into paragraphs so you can see, and then the call is pretty much recorded where you can play back and hear yourself live? Yeah, totally. And, and it, uh, it, the, 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 it looks like a script. It looks like a Shakespearean script. So it has, you know, Jackson's name and then the lines that you spoke and then my name underneath it. And it also has it time stamped, but the, oh, nice. you know, the, the transcription is not the b most interesting part because what I can do instead of, instead of going through and scrolling through the transcription, I can just, you know, look at, okay, like how many objections came up on the call. It analyzes that and shows me every single objection where they showed up and what they were, you know, nice how many times, like, you know, if, if numbers are important, you know, how many times was pricing mentioned? Um, you know, how many seats did they talk about? Um, you know, it, it can, it can get super nitty gritty. Got it's it. great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can tell. And it would be a great learning tool for, especially if the new SDRs are on the team, right? Like the SDR manager can't be there the whole entire time to fully shadow them. I mean, you don't want to shadow them micromanagement and stuff like that, but it's a good way to bring up, especially on the one-on-ones, I'd imagine. Hey, Sarah, this is what you did great. This is something you can improve on. What are your thoughts? How can we get yeah. feedback? Nice. A hundred percent. And you can go into Gong and it can show you what the coaching is without even having to have a manager walk you through it. It can say like, hey, this is what you're talking about, but this is what the top performer is talking about. Bam. This top performer talks about this thing 140% more than you do. Maybe you should talk about it. And then you can go to your manager and be like, dude, or you can just listen to that person's calls. Yeah. Listen to how they position it, how they talk about it. It's great. Yeah. Um, Love it. It was transformative for me because before, my job before Gong, I was really crummy. A very poopy v bad <laughs> <laughs> i was a trash i was a trash bucket of an sdr oh no, no not trash bucket don't say that i was, just trash bucket. I was, I was bad i was bad you know new, new sdr is what you i think. was i was very green i okay. was i was like you know we were hoping i would sprout you know i was like a seed yeah before you put a, it in the water you know the seed, the that seed. was me we'll go with there, the seed it as a seed i had potential but there was there was nothing to show for it. You, so, you have potential. You have potential. And then, uh, and then Gong was the watering can, and, and suddenly I, I blossomed. <laughs> yeah, yep. It sure, yeah. No, no doubt about that. S Sarah, talk to us about life as an SDR. So, you know, when it comes down to Gong, when they post that, you are the face of Gong, especially with that life as an SDR. Like, I truly believe even if somewhere in the near future, if you happen to – you know, start something new in terms of ende future endeavors, uh, you're still going to be the face of Gong. You're the face of Gong right now. If I don't know what Gong is, I go on LinkedIn and I just saw that. I was like, Sarah Brady, who's that? Man, she's got to be like the full face acting role or something like that. You are the face of Gong. Tell us about how did you get started and how, 
how did that how did that end up rolling down the hill with you guys um yeah i'm I'm, thank you i don't think of myself as the face of gong but that's pretty cool uh that's cool yeah so i mean one the way i the way that the way i started posting on social media is i posted one time on linkedin uh about a bad q4 call i called a, a vp of sales in q4 and he just he was really mad at me he's like why are you bothering people in q4 that's so dumb go away and i was like what he hung up on me. <laughs> but later he's kind of like, what? That's, what do you, like, first of all, it's been Q4 for two days. So like, you're not closing any deals right now. <laughs> Second of all, I don't know why you got to be so mad. Cause it's like, you run a sales team. You more than anyone should know, you should be calling prospects in Q4. It's typically most, most companies have their biggest quarters either in Q4 or Q1. So like, I'm confused. Um, and so I, <laughs> So I posted that on the internet being like, eh, whatever. I'm just going to keep dialing. And oh. it just like blew up. And when that happened, I just suddenly had a ton of people following me and uh, people connecting with me on LinkedIn. And I was like, cool, I guess, I guess I have a lot of, a lot of new friends now. And I thought, well, you know, I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't have a plan, but I thought if I just, I just want to the first, the next two times that I posted, I just wanted to see if people would like it. I'm just, people just liked it a lot randomly. So I was like, okay, well, I should probably just keep posting for the sake of posting and I'll see what happens. So I guess I was finding my voice and I think that I'm still yeah. finding the voice on, on the internet. But I thought, well, I'll just post things about being an SDR. Like, what is it like being an SDR? What's a day in the life of an SDR? Nice, well, nice, nice. And you know, like, how, how do you survive being an SDR? And I think the only way to survive is if you turn it into a game, you make it a joke. You, you can, you can laugh at the stupid things to happen and, and you, you, uh, you make it so that you, you, you kind of create a shell. I try to create like a shell of comedy around me. Every, you know, when someone hangs up on me or someone yells at me, it's like, well, eh. and being able to shake it off is, I guess I do it publicly now in some ways. Um, but you know, like just being able to make a joke out of like the the times when being an SDR is crummy, or the or be serious about just like yeah, it can be a really big grind, and that you know if you've done it for two years, like mentally you can kind of become exhausted by the same motion over and over again, like living in Groundhog's Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially in, in quarantine, sheltering in place, it's like mega mega Groundhog's Day. I'm like, what day oh, is it? <laughs> right, it's like. Wait a minute, is it is it is it Tuesday, Saturday? What? <laughs> Sarah, yeah. you know what I really um love a lot about you, uh when I start first started seeing your content, just following you. And you know, I I, I like to watch people and I study them closely. And what I really love about you is that you are one hundred percent who you are. You know, you're real, you're up front. This is who you are. You would never find content or something or people are catching be like, hey. She's faking it. Hey, she used to be an actor, so she's acting. No, that's off the bat. Like, you are 100% legit, and the people love you for that. Whether it's good or bad, whatever it is that you shared, it's genuine. Uh, it's something that they can relate to, especially with your life as an SDR and other content that you push out. It's always real, raw, pure, and even the formatting too as well. Love your formatting the way when you're posting. Sometimes it changes. Sometimes it moves to the left. Sometimes it moves to the right. Sometimes the, the spelling changes like it's back in the AOL days. Yeah, you know, LOL with the, hash, with the high capital Z or not. <laughs> and this is exactly. who you are. And, you know, I, I truly believe everything that you wanted to be back in the day, such as an actor, you still are today. And that's how you're, you're doing so well when it comes to video over at Gong. Because, you know, you've been that person. And this is who you are. And you're actually having it mixed with sales and what better way to do it than having both sides of the world at the same time. So I really love that about you. Thank you. That made me feel so special. <laughs> <laughs> I have warm fuzzies all over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sarah, I, man, this is amazing. I know we're running about, uh, about almost about the hour here. So I just want to ask something for you real quick. So, you know, I, I truly believe, and we chatted about this before too, you're, 
next for you, I, I'm assuming you're probably going to take an AU route. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's the next step. Yep. Yeah, no doubt you're going to be successful in that because you already have the sales development role fully taken down and you have that process embedded in you and you're not, and you're, you're asking the right way and your, your messaging is right. You know, like, Hey, can I have 15 minutes? No, it's not. It's like, Hey, is this something you'd like to learn more about? Is this something that you're relevant to you? And it's just, you're selling the conversation rather than just asking what time. Right. And then for the closing part, I'm sure you got that down too, because you've been partnering up with a lot of your AEs over there too, as well, from what I saw. Um, and so one thing I want to ask and just, just to throw it out there to put it down for the women's and for being the first one, uh, would you be open for doing a quick live role play? Oh, like of a cold call? Yeah. So let's say you're, you're doing what you're doing. You're at Gong. Um, yeah. I just opened a brand new sales team. Uh, you know, we just got funded. I have like 10 reps, um, no Gong, no solution whatsoever. And you found, uh, you know, somehow, some way you found me that, we, we need this type of be, be, to benefit, so to speak. Okay, cool. So you just got a round of funding and how much has your sales team grown? You've got 10 reps, but how, how, how much has it grown? Uh, it's not sure about that, but you know, it's growing and we just want to, okay. I just want to hear how you are when it comes to just um, booking that meeting. So my, my pain is uh, I, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and training with them. Um, okay. However, it's very time consuming and I have to focus on other things and Let's just say I'm in the market for something. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's just do it. Let's just, we'll just, I'll just make it up. You'll make it up. We'll, we'll see if I can get you. All right. All right we'll yeah, see yeah. what happens. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we'll find out. Let's go. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. Oh, it's got some, uh, so, yeah, some tar got some in the neighborhoods. Yeah. Crazy. But, all right. We'll make <laughs> so, some street racers outside, I guess. That was actually the, the faux phone. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually, the no, ringing of the phone. That, that, that was the warm up because they knew you were coming, so they had to do that for you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Whew. Okay. All right. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, is this Jackson? Yes. Who's this? Hey, hey Jackson. It's Sarah Brazier with Gong.io and a recorded line. How have you been? I'm well. I'm well. Sarah, uh, how are you? Oh, no, you broke up. Do it again. Sorry. The internet's oh. bad. Okay. <laughs> How's it now? Okay, it's good. You want to start over again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, is this Jackson? Yes. Who's who's this? Hey, it's Sarah Brazier with Gong.io and a recorded line. How have you been? Oh, Sarah. Okay. Um, have have we met? Uh, no, we haven't. Hey, I know I'm kind of calling you out of the blue, so I can keep it super brief. Um, is it fair if I tell you the reason why I call and then you can tell me if it's a conversation you're interested in having? Sure. Okay, awesome. Thanks for the shot. Hey, so Jackson, the reason for my outreach is that I, I noticed on LinkedIn that um, you guys just recently had a massive round of funding. Congratulations. Um, but that aside, uh, I saw that you have you run a team of about 10 sales reps and you guys actually have some open recs on the website. So I, I assume that um, you guys are growing. Uh, that in mind, I just thought it might be an appropriate time to start a conversation around what we do over here at Gong. Uh, have you heard of us before? Oh, okay. Uh, I have not, but go on. Okay, cool. Would it make sense if I give you the 27 second, you know, dog and pony show, and then you can tell me if it, if it's interesting. Sure. Okay, sweet. Yeah. So, um, we're a revenue intelligence platform. Basically what that means is we capture, transcribe and analyze your customer facing conversations. And, and we surface insights into like three key buckets. You know, the first is, um, really around like your market intelligence. It's understanding the voice of the market as it rapidly shifts, especially in this environment, uh, and, and allows you to inform your go-to market decision-making. The second area is around your people. I know that you're hiring a lot. Uh, your team is growing really rapidly. And so Gong surfaces, you know, what makes your top performers hit quota most consistently. So you you can streamline that across your org. And the third area is, um, you know, your deals. Uh, I don't, I don't know if, if this is important to you, but I, when I talk to a lot of sales leaders, they're really concerned that they're not moving deals fast enough through the pipeline. So we help you understand, you know, how you can maximize your open pipeline as well as reduce churn overall with your customer base. I, I'll pause there. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. Does it, does any of that resonate with you? Sarah, that, that was over 27 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I love going too much. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That was good. Um, I, I, no, that was really good. Uh, 
Yeah, good job. No, I, I love it. I, I was just messing around with that. I just wanted to see what you say. <laughs> but that was really good. Um, you know, you asked for permission. You showed credibility. You showed that you did the research. Hey, you just got a massive round of funding. Congratulations. And I check your site, which means I'm assuming you're growing. And then you, def- you pivoted on the spot. Great job. Good stuff. And you were able to just get get me drawn in and just asking for everything in general. And uh, I, yeah, you did everything was good. And I was just messing around to just say what a 27 <laughs> second, but you did it. Yeah. That was good stuff. Um, man, that's yeah. Good stuff. Sarah Brazier. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again so much for this, Sarah. Uh, so Sarah, um, just to wrap things up, if there's anyone out here, so just two last two questions for you. So if there's, if there's a new and young sales development rep right now, you know, Maybe it's a girl. Maybe she just graduated, and you know she's she 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 was in a debate team too, right? And she said, you know what, screw this. Um, I really want to get into tech. What what kind of tip would you have for that person to one up their game in the sales development role? Yeah, I think the first thing is just she needs to be her own advocate. Um, the only person who's got your back 100% of the time is you. And I, I would tell anybody this, but when, when you are looking for a job, when you are looking to grow, you have to be the voice that, you have to be the squeaky wheel. You have to, you have to get the coaching that you need. And if you're not getting it, you have to say so. You have to, you know, you have, you have to make, you have to make asks of it because nothing is given to you. Um, and uh, you, you got to be gritty and you got to, you got to go for it. I think like the biggest thing that changed my ability to sell and sell well, um, outside of being able to listen to my calls and gong was having a really good coach in Tanner Robinson. And I, I would encourage you if you're looking at a company to join, you know, really be crit- think critically about what you need in order to thrive and make sure that that person is in line with what you're looking for. Um, because yeah. the only way to grow a career where you could be successful is, yeah, so, is if you find, uh, you, you know, a, a place where, um, a place where you can thrive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if there's anyone out there that's want to reach out to you, say, thank you so much for your insight. What's the best way to reach out to you? <laughs> Hit me up on LinkedIn. Bam. There it is, you guys. And thank you so much. And that wraps it up for the one of sales development podcast. Sarah Brazier, thank you again so much for hopping on and being our first female guest. We truly appreciate you. Awesome. Thanks for having me. It's been great.